Hello everybody, welcome back to Flow. Today we're doing relationships part two. Quick side note though, before we start our hoodies, right? These are new, these are prototypes, so first version. By all means, let us know what you think, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or wherever, and we'll be working on new designs to bring to you in the future. And let, let us know if you need like these simple designs or the more graphic um, images like we have on our you know, YouTube and uh, the artwork that we upload. Exactly, would you prefer the 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 simple one or the artwork or would you like it stitched instead of uh, printed so you know whatever it is your feedback is always welcome anyways let's get on to relationships part two the first podcast was you know really good people responded yeah. to it they wanted a part two and this one i think we should make it a very raw emotional podcast where we don't focus so much on the different relationships in your life where they are parental siblings or love we mm -hmm. just focus on love because that's what people care about so tell me, when you think about relationships in today's day and age, what do you think about? Um, as in like what you call romantic relationships? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Today, just yeah. focusing on romantic relationships and how it's changed. Oh, it's changing a lot. I feel like um, the biggest thing that's changing is we're moving from like, from like a marriage bound kind of society into this kind of like... Um, where things there's less less strings attached kind of thing okay yeah mm -hmm. and i feel like what you call in all all forms of what you call um life we see this like what you call where people are getting married later people getting married less and also what you call um the divorce ratio is pretty high as well so that means there's a lot of relationships which are like unofficial relationships that are not like government registered or like what you call so people are like taking it much more easier i feel like people are taking it people are looking at relationships as less serious right basically okay. yeah why though has to be a reason it's been like it's been popularized by uh, like pop culture by films and stuff like that it's been it's been something that you know like you see all those memes about like oh how like expensive divorces are and this and that and you know it's become like we've made it into like a laughing stock matter where and marriage is becoming even more difficult these days to do because you know um what you call where as the other path is so straightforward where you're just like oh we'll just be like in a relationship or we just live together and stuff and you know who needs to get married and stuff you know um, yeah people would waste say, money on that I... waste time on that and like what you call um go through the whole hassle so i feel like definitely we're moving towards a much more you know less strings attached kind of thing where you can just like Okay, so to, to follow up on your point, a lot of people that I've heard over the years, they'll say things like, why do I need a piece of paper to prove that I love somebody? Why do I need an official marriage? Now, religiously, that's a whole different topic altogether course, because you're kind of doing it in the eyes of God or yeah. your God. So there's a different holy matrimony to it. But generally speaking, people do say that, like, why do I need to be registered to prove that I have love for you? But then there's that, to assure yourself of pure commitment right to assure yourself in the strongest way that your partner isn't leaving or wouldn't think about leaving doesn't marry solidify that yeah that's what i mean i feel like as a whole society we've become so conscious about commitment like we've become so scared of commitment fully that we're doing this like what you call i feel like generally you've kind of become like a like, I'm not sure if you, um, you did psychology at A-level, right? I did psychology and yeah. sociology. So you know how there was like different, uh, like attachment Sorry. types? Yeah. So I feel like we've become like an insecure attachment type with society, like in, as a whole. Why are humans than insecure then? I mean, I could, I could think of 10 different reasons on top of my head why people are insecure. I don't know, like what do you call stories people tell, things that they've experienced, you know, secondhand and stuff like that. But I feel definitely there's this sense of like fear of commitment fully committing to something or they're like or, or, or when you watch movies they're like oh but you have to go through like eight people to find the right person on this and that there's so much like um that gets fed to you passively as well where you feel like what you call um you can't just stick with the first person you see what if i said i low-key disagree yeah. i low-key disagree when you say that movies teach us that because forget romantic comedies to an extent let's think 
general movies and TV series. Or like those like um, Prince Charming and the Princess ones. Yeah, but I mean, we all know that's like Disney though, isn't it? But hear me out. Now, we have a podcast coming up that's going to talk about all about advertisement and branding. And one thing that advertisement and branding does at a really high level is show you nuclear families. So most of your favorite shows at the top of your head, mm. name it. Name one. This is like this could be whether I'm right or wrong, but name one of your favorite shows. Um, That's quite realistic. So I don't. So like for example, don't tell me about Westworld because that wouldn't really fit into the relationship topic that we're talking about. But a general uh, TV show. Let's take Stranger Things, for example. No, but but that's about kids and. What do you mean? I'm talking about Modern Family. Oh, Modern. Oh, you. I'm mean talking like, about ah, Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. I'm talking about. Very realistic TV Oh, shows. I thought you mean like a random like show. No, 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 or, no, no. Or, or, or. Because they, they wouldn't fit in with the principle <laughs> yeah. that we're talking about. What I'm that trying was, to they say They wouldn't is... print the thing you're trying to portray me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm trying to say yeah. is, is that when you look at middle UK or middle America, the shows that we watch on Sky One or whatever channel it is, whether mm. it's Modern Family or any other TV show, yeah. they depict a normal nuclear family. Yeah, where there's like a husband and wife and kids and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and what they've done now, especially with shows like Modern Family, is that they've modernised it to um, gay couples, um, straight couples, all, all sorts, that, you know, young couples. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say to you is, is that you're saying that passively pop culture tells us to not get married. I'm saying actually passively pop culture and where the advertisement is, is still with showing a nuclear general family on, on the TV screen. Yeah. But it is moving away from that. Like, what do you call it? Most shows are not that kind of show. Like, do you get me? But like, these are very common yeah. shows. Modern Family just ended last year. Yeah. But stuff like EastEnders as well and stuff like that, it's moving towards a different direction now than it The main was, characters, like, though, are they not in nuclear families? Yeah, they are in nuclear families, but okay. I'm saying, like, there's a movement away from that. Okay. On two shows. But is how it, long do you think that will take? I don't know. It's like, it's going to be a much more slow process, but I feel like in other shows and stuff, like, for example, if you just open up, like, a show from, like, the 60s or the 50s or something, you will not see as many, like, single parents raising kids and stuff for like sure, that in shows. For sure, Which is the norm now, especially with, like, Western shows, like, American and British shows and stuff like that. It's like, what do you call, we are moving away from seeing, you know, the nuclear family on telly. If you see all you sorts an example of, of that. Which TV show do you think doesn't show it anymore? Um, loads of TV shows, like movies, for example. What are you are, watching right now? Um, right now, I've been watching Black Mirror, for example. But obviously, that's not Again, that's a good example. But that idiots. that has like all sorts of relationships you see yeah. in that. So um, you do see like nuclear families in that, but also much more of the time, like single people or like other types of relationships and stuff like that as well. So. Um, I just finished, this is a bit older, I just finished watching The Sopranos. That was definitely a nuclear family, yeah. although totally. But that's an Italian about. thing as well. It's, right? it's a cultural thing. Yeah. yeah American. Yeah. I'm watching Family Guy, that's not much of a measure. <laughs> yeah, that's not. <laughs> although, you know, nuclear family, Peter and Lois, they never get divorced. So, again, staying on commitment for a second, you know, the question was why does marriage have to be a commitment? Commitment is harder, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I am, but. Commitment is harder because people have more options. But people, people are more have accessible. Options. Yeah, but didn't have people have more options back in the day as well? No, no, definitely not. Not with social media. Because now you can go, mm. you can go um, from being single and let's say 40, 50 years ago, you'd go to your local pub, you'd go to your friends, you'll find mutuals, people that you could um, interact with and possibly yeah. date. Whereas now that you can about, go yeah. online and within a space of an hour, sign up for like 10 different dating sites. Yeah, and the matches will just flood in. Generally mm. speaking, yeah, we we talked about this on our previous podcast as well. Yeah, on how exactly. like social media has uh, like made things much more accessible, uh, and you know, made people closer together that live further away as well. That does. I see what you're trying to say with the. Would you see how part. that lessens yeah, commitment? Because the thing is, um, basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're trying to say is that. If people have such variety, they're always like unsure and like anxious about which one they're picking. Yeah, literally. This like, oh, what if a better one comes in? Like, what do you call? Yes, people are less willing to sit down and and make it work because they're thinking, I've got another option here. There's a girl mm. that I can call, and it's a fallacy. Like as we've spoken about before, it's an absolute fallacy. Like I personally believe, the more options you have, the more detrimental it is to your to your actual happiness in love because mm. you you're under this this fallacy that oh because i have option a b c and yeah. 
that I can leave A and start with, but they all need the same level of effort. Because, I agree. One yeah. time, sorry, sorry, go on. I do agree that sometimes having options help you distinguish who's better for you per se, but for you to make a healthy relationship, which whether it's option one or option number four, you still have to stick to it. But people are losing that sense now because they feel this entitlement to go and leave whenever things go wrong. I just, I just don't see... Like they, they want a quick exit, basically. They, want a, they constantly want to live in a honeymoon phase. They yeah. constantly want to live in that first six months of a relationship where nothing can go wrong. And as soon as things start going wrong... But that's wrong, how it's portrayed. Like, that's how love is portrayed. That love is that. But, but it's that not, isn't is it? love, is it? That is not love. So, so it's, yeah. our, it's our um, choice and it's our decisions. We have to be smarter than that. Yeah. People understand, like, your body can naturally not go for 30, 40 years with that, that level of, like, chemical no, no, no. imbalance. No, it can't. Um, and that adrenaline and, you know, the butterflies and stuff like that. Which is sad, but it's, it's, it's the reality, like you say. But I, I do agree with the, um, you know, all things being equal, it is difficult to decipher between, you know, the perfect person for you when you have a lot of options because we, humans don't do that good with options. Um, most humans. Um, but... You don't know where your mind is. Yeah. Like, um, uh, you know, you wake up and you decide on what to wear. You have two options in comparison to having ten options. It takes longer. You know, um, food at the table, there's five dishes there mm. in comparison to two. It just takes longer. Yeah. You've got to make the smart, calculated decision for yourself. Yeah. Now, by all means, I'm not saying don't go, to, don't, don't go into the dating world and um, stick to the first person you find. That's obviously not what I'm saying. This whole notion of if things aren't going right, I can leave because I have another option. Okay, great. But that unless you're happy with... Um, monkey branching as you put it in the previous uh, podcast mm. then it's not going to work out for you if yeah. you want commitment and even that's you have to, to commit yeah, yeah of course it's, it's you know just common yeah. sense here guys to get a commitment you have to commit yourself and also what do you call um people are getting married later is because they're doing this where they're thinking a better potential mate is going to come right yeah and they wait their you know 20s out and stuff like that and then when they find someone then they want to trial it and like uh be like what do you call in a what do you call boyfriend girlfriend relationship for as long as they can and then get engaged and then you know long that out and then get married basically okay i have a few stats for you uh, that's why i've been looking at my notebook all this time so for example 17 percent of adults that tinder is a big app we've got to talk about tinder 70 percent of adults have said they've used tinder but 52 percent of adults between 18 to 24 have used tinder so do you see the shift do you see the shift from because when you say adults, you're talking anywhere between 18 to like 70, 75, right? So only 17% if you include the whole range. But short range, only 18 that to 20. App. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. I'm specifically talking about Tinder here because, and I'll tell you what, what in a second. Group? 18 to 24, 52% of 18 to 24 year olds have used Tinder. And do you know, and you know what specifically, that, you know? do you know specifically yeah. why I talk about Tinder? Because it's that. It's literally the um, definition of flicking through options. Yeah, it's like you a know, swipe. Yeah. yeah, that's how simple it is. I want this, I don't want this, people. So how does Tinder operate? Like, is it your locality or...? Primarily, yes. Primarily, it... I've got it written here. It'll track your location and it will tell you that within this mile range or whatever, it's up to you. So does it tell you who swiped you right as well? You only find that out when you match. All right. So if I match on option A and option A is then matched on me, then we're both allowed to talk to each other. So actually, that's one really good thing um, about Tinder is that you can only you only speak to people who are willing to speak to you. Mm -hmm. You can't forcefully go message people. Whereas on a Facebook or an Instagram, you know, if you're a pretty girl, you probably have a different thousand different dms to ignore every day because yeah, anyone's allowed Lazo. to reach out yeah. to you <laughs> if you're Lazo. for lazo's uh, um, tinder wait, but, wait wait till the end another, of the another, <laughs> another big thing i i don't have <laughs> i do not have tinder <laughs> don't put that out there i don't have it he's gonna Lazo's here's gonna a get into a lot here's of a big thing. this podcast here's a big thing here's a big thing how what's the percentage uh, of male users on tinder guess percentage in terms of overall users which is about 66 million users that tinder has 
Ten percent of which pay for it. That's right. a big thing as well. Wait, is there like a paid and non-paid thing? Yes, all everything. Oh, every every dating gap you go on, there's the free version and then there's the because I've looked into. I I, I did so much just research. Be all, like paid, all of it. No, no, I did so much yeah. research for this. You can uh, practically every dating gap is free, but then you pay for it to get extra so advantages. What, the, <laughs> what did they give you extra? <laughs> so um, I I honestly don't know, but listen. Yeah, did they give you a better match. <laughs> Like <laughs> I don't think I, I. How does it work? Right, Google it. Then we'll we'll find out yeah. exactly. But what do you think of the sixty-six million people? What percentage do you think are men? What percentage do you think are women? Well, in an ideal world, it'd be fifty percent, fifty percent. It's not. I feel like there'll be a bit more men on it. I'll feel maybe like I have the stats here. I found out last 65% night. Sixty-five percent men. Seventy-eight percent men. How does that work? Seventy-eight <laughs> percent men. Are we talking about? Are these like? Actually, let, let me... Is let this me... like heterosexual matching as well, or...? I think you can have uh, homosexual right. matching yeah. as well. So... Th- but it's disproportionately men. Yeah, right? of course. Of course. Which, basically, just by, si- like, simple economics makes it w- really weird. That's like a two-to-one ratio, right? That's more than two-to-one, bro. Well, how much do you That's say? That's like three-to-one. Almost, That's yeah. easily three Over to one. Over two to one, Because yeah. if it was 75-25, that would yeah. be three to one. This is 78-22, so it's like yeah. 2.8 to one. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> it's three to I one. Can't, I still can't fathom. Okay, the... <laughs> do you want me, you guys, let me make this worse for you. Because this is how much men contribute to the dating sites. So we just talked about Tinder specifically. Mm. Now let's talk a broad sense. What percentage of men do you is think that broadly... Is like men are struggling? <laughs> I'll explain why I think that is. I'll explain why I think that's that is. That's pretty bad. <laughs> it's very bad But I've got another percentage that, for you like skews the whole Landscape Really badly Yeah Okay I'll make it worse for you Not just Tinder But every app 85% of the users are men So even like Instagram or Facebook No 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 uh, We're talking dating apps Oh dating yeah. apps I think there's uh, There's there's a Minda one There's a Muzz Match one There's um, There's a Raw. Uh, the whole like hierarchy here, man. An, yeah, yeah, so eighty five percent, which is funny because I have not actually met like personally um, a girl who's told me she's on of like most likely because app. she isn't most likely. But I do know guys like even like guys who are very old like in comparison to our generation, and I've heard that they're on it like okay. which is weird so let me explain this and this is specifically why I brought up Tinder because um, we're getting in, we're is, getting deep is into it because men are like shit at socialising and like talking to that's, that's, that's women a big thing that's a big thing so so um, that's a definitely a big thing as I just said but let, let me also like be very raw and blatant with this what ends up happening is you have to look at men and women. How do mm. women choose the people that they want to be with in their life? Yes, attractiveness helps, but it's also more about what do they do, what they're doing, what are their future prospects, what's the security yeah. that I can be with this person in terms of an actual relationship. How yeah. do men think? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say. I've said it a million times. I've said it a million times. And I know a lot of people who don't approve of what I say, but... I, I think it's true. Facts, bro. Facts. Bro, men think with their dicks. I just tapped my brain. No, they don't. They don't. They don't think with their brains. They, men think with their dicks. Unfortunately, and Very I know sad. some of you are, are saying like, you oh. know, I, I have. I mentioned that study in the previous one, in it. Yes. Uh, how photograph, uh, photographs and stuff, right? Yeah. 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 So basically, which is so weird because the thing is. <laughs> so many people are going to tell me why did you just say that <laughs> but I, I don't I don't think it's wrong like I'm here to have an you know unfint, unfiltered intellectual discussion as I said in our bio so I've got it's to be like, honest about it it's like a whole like my like if you see a guy with a girl his whole he, he becomes like his chest grows like by 0.6 inches yeah like he right? puffs his chest everything out. changes like a whole dynamic changes yeah man. he wants to be alpha yeah his whole I don't know if it's like some hormonal change it is hormonal. I don't know if it's like no, Mental. No, it, it is hormonal, 100%. Because uh, you've read Sapiens, right? I've read Sapiens. Sapiens talks into, you know, what a woman would have back in the day um, needed from a man and what that's a man very, had like, to do. So Yeah, I get he's very, like, he's very biological. Like, he comes from that kind it of... It is yeah. biological because yeah. when you fall in love with someone, the chemical reactions inside your brain are crazy. I feel like a lot of psychological as well. He wants yeah. to, like, yeah, of course. Men believe, for whatever reason, men and boys, we believe that in order to get the girl, you have to be the... In most cases, you have to be the alpha in the room. Which sometimes is completely not is, true. Sometimes it is true. Sometimes it's not true. But definitely not. Well, like, it's definitely not an 80-20%. Yeah, no, no. Because, like, obviously, like, there's been stats where show that 
uh, what do you call most women like bigger like better cars like what do you call like like the audi q series or you know what do you call um land rovers and stuff like that because they're like more protective and stuff but that's that's more of a, like a safety thing but these <laughs> Maybe... days there's a different way to be pr protective like yeah. okay a hundred years ago this you is like financial it. protection now thank yeah. you financial protection trust commitment mm. there's different ways to be safe so to speak and i think that shows the difference between men and women i think when approaching their potential partners men both genders definitely and whichever genders uh, yeah. else there are both you genders definitely think from a sexual aspect 100 yeah. percent. but men specifically you know what's sad <laughs> the family ethnicity the work the education right uh, the intellect the iq the fun the humor the social aspect for men it's like five percent night which is so sad <laughs> So sad. It's true. Ninety-five percent or more for some guys is literally pure physical looks. Yeah, especially and at I the wish beginning. It was different, especially at the beginning. Now, obviously, as you go on through a relationship, boys and men they start realizing, okay, I've been six months here. The physical, the physical attractions are starting. To... As you, by the way, as you grow up, this does change for sure. Like well, I've, I've noticed it in my you mature environment and stuff that you mature. You, you do like. There, there's more to life than just that, and oh, you realize that what you call, um, you know, you, like you, you, the conversations and you know the person, the personality and stuff does like take the win afterwards. But for for most guys, like the overwhelming majority is just pure. The preference is always looks. How many times has like have we seen guys who just like are obsessed with that factor? They don't even like. We're trying to like talk to yeah, them. Yeah, for and sure. Stuff. We're for trying sure. like. Say that this person may not be the best person for you and this and that. Okay. But they're like, they're bl that, 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 <laughs> the looks have just blinded them and they cannot see past it. For sure. You're right. Yeah. Now that applies to girls as well, but definitely more. Because girls will say, for example, oh, um, I want my, uh, you know, my boyfriend to also be really funny, for yeah. example. You know, whereas guys are like, they're not as interested in being made to laugh in a conversation or yeah. being taken somewhere nice or treated properly. I feel yeah. like nowadays, like we like that, that. I mean, I don't know. I like that stuff. But I have yeah. another. I have no. I have a curveball here. This one I can definitely be wrong with, but the curveball I'm about to throw is I actually think, even though men are more interested in the physical attractiveness of the woman, when it comes down to it, men fall in love quicker. Yeah, much quicker, and also I feel like, and I'm gonna say it now. Also, you agree with on me? My, yeah, oh. on my lad Pascal. Oh, sorry. On my the last podcast that we did, I wasn't gonna say this, but I'll actually say it now. I feel like men love more as well, more deeply, more intensely. This is interesting. And, yeah. Okay, so and, this is what and, today is about. Way, this We're is getting more, into it. No, no, this is more about just experience and like for the little life that I've lived, right? And and <laughs> and life. recently, like this is like the last year or two that this reality has just switched on me by seeing it not even personally, bro, like seeing it in my environment. Talking to guys, talking to girls as well, like what you call about your friends, about their relationships and guys about their relationships. You get me? I've realized that guys, are, like what you call when they do fall in love, which by the way is scientifically absolutely correct. They do fall in love faster because. Yeah. Which is really strange. Fall in love, like not just like lust and stuff, love, right? In a matter of like four or five dates. For women, it might take up to 20. Like for women, it might take three, Rightfully four months. Rightfully so, flipping out, they're course, thinking properly. And obviously, if you come from the biological point of view, like Darwin and like <laughs> Harari, and they'll they'll all be like, oh, it's because they have like gametes that they need to protect, and like obviously, like like this might sound vulgar, but like men can like what you call procreate so much more times a single day and like so much more times a week and month than a, a female can you know it's nine months of like looking after that baby and herself and stuff like that and they'll basically come from it but i feel like even that aside right men are just more hardwired into what you call um finding the right person and if they click with them then falling in love straight away it's very like it's very straightforward for men like to do that whereas women go through the whole like the whole roller coaster. Do you think women have to be more cautious in they relationships? They have to be more cautious, yeah. Because they're more likely to get left, and also if potentially they break up, they have to stick with the kids most likely. Yeah, and they can't Whereas stick men with can someone just who's 
someone who's just gonna bounce, someone who's abusive, someone who's gonna like what you call uh, harm not her provide. or not not be able to provide like what you call. So she has to be much more careful. Or it's he, worse when you find those yeah. men who can provide but don't, rather than one who's trying. Yeah. But and it's not even about providing short. in terms of like she can probably provide for herself, but it's more about like what you call being emotionally available and being there and like what you call things that are important to her basically to find that if this can be like a long-term partner okay okay but for men it's like they like what they look sorry they um yeah so they like what they see yeah and then what you call they like talk to them like see them and just in a matter of like what you call a few times they've seen each other in a matter of like few weeks they're in like madly in love why though? Tell me, like, why is it that the guys go from nah, bro, I'm not gonna date yeah. to I'm in and love? Through, so by the way, this isn't just now. This is throughout history. You've seen like what you call, um, like you know, I remember like when I was a kid watching Merlin and stuff. Like back in the day, like knights and stuff would would you know hold their whole life they would do challenges and like fight dragons and shit like that. Like to get a woman they've never even seen in their life for the favors of a woman, right? And then. Like, what do you call, like, the girl just has to look pretty and just be there. I'm not saying this is the case now, but, like, in, back in the day, definitely. Do you get me? And, like, show gallantry and, like, what do you call, like, there was uh, this book I read. It was just a, f- a fictional one based on, you know, author, author and, like, what you, King Arthur and Pendragon and stuff like that. Um, that, you know, Gwen, 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 right, his wife, she basically... Um, had a thing for a night but basically some evil tyrant took her away basically locked her up and st- something so this knight right Sir Lancelot ha- had to what do you call go get her but she saw that basically there was this carriage so this carriage right was the carriage of like shame where the prisoners arsonists oh, okay. rapists like the worst in society right <clears throat> would be on that wagon and that wagon was the only thing going to this this castle where he had to save her so when he went to her and like he hesitated for just two steps and then he got onto it when it started going right and he went there and then he, he did the whole thing he killed the evil guy he got her he brought her back to the king but she would not be nice to him and he's like he did not understand what the hell because this guy's risked his whole life everything this guy's madly in love with her right he asks her like my lady like why do you like not you know why not why are you not the same to me that you were and guess what she says I she no goes idea. i saw you hesitate for but two steps in that carriage and he goes that shows me that you're not on that level like if if you really cared for me you would have just jumped onto the that is such a girl thing to say <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a female thing to say and these are like i'm reading to you things from the arts bro like things yeah. hundreds of years ago no but it's this so believable that like one tiny thing is what she was like you know, all day you're like why are you upset why are you upset why are you upset I just think it's funny that he took this step steps <laughs> yeah he just oh. probably thought like he's a knight what people think like if he's in that wagon like people like throwing tomatoes at him dirt at him thinking he's probably killed someone or he's done something stupid or like he's he's no longer he should be ashamed that he was given that rank and he did something stupid do you get me so he was just thinking like should I do it should I do it yeah I'll do it do you get me I have a theory for you what the way we're going right now, which is basically, it's almost like a free for all. Yeah. Just you know, go out there, no matchmaking, no pro- like obviously. But can still... I just mention one point on, before we on. leave this topic? No, we're not leaving it. But go on. But the thing is, like, what you call, and I feel like when even in a like a monogamous relationship and stuff, even in a strong like husband wife relationship, so this is something I've seen a lot. I don't know if it's like, um, if it's just me, but. Men love much more intensely, I feel like. Because if something happens, like, for example, if something happens to your other part who's a, who's a woman, right? Yeah. You go crazy, right? Because you want to obviously, like, what do you call, um, make sure she's okay and stuff like that. For example, though, if, if, for example, say if I was married, right? And if I broke my leg or something, and if I had a wife or a daughter, right? They'd probably, like, laugh over it. They'll be like, oh, like, grow up thingy. Like, do you get oh, me? Oh, you're a man. Yeah, so you're a man. Kidding. Like, the, But if it happened to, like, my daughter or my 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 wife or something, I would be, like, trying to take the like care of her, trying to, like, make sure she's okay, get to the doctors, make sure it's, like, healing okay, everything's, like, running smoothly and stuff like that. So I feel like 
because and in every generation we've seen where like back in the day when there was like empires and stuff when they'd come and like what you call uh, take over another country or something they'd kill off all the men but leave the women do you get me so I've, i feel like men in our culture society as a as a race as a human species have all been that replaceable uh, like um gender that you know he's just replaceable yeah, we'll keep the women beyonce do you get me replace. really <laughs> yeah, beyonce's that. song if, you, if that comes to mind but basically i feel like men's like <clears throat> emotion for the, and they're seen to be like oh this guy's going to like get martyred for his his country for his for his wife and this and that like do you get me all that kind of stuff is all glorified but it's not expected from the women no because they don't go out to fight do they no but it's like okay in most I, cultures no yeah okay unless you're like israel or something but the thing is like what do you call to many have... many cultures women go out and fight yeah. but we don't have to talk about that yeah but the thing is like what do you call um i feel like i don't know why but i just feel like what do you call much more is expected from men in that regard right in terms of like everyone says that men fully don't come here and like fully don't like what you call love and stuff but i feel like men love that's interesting guys uh... a more selfless love i feel like oh yes okay. i feel like for example women mothers love their children fully selflessly parents 100%. love their children unconditionally yeah. and i would say a mother probably loves her kids more than her father does makes 100 percent. and because i feel like women see their kids as an extension of themselves well they physically carry it yeah. for nine months so i feel like that kid getting harmed is almost to the mother that a part of her. them yeah 100% i agree with that yeah. but when it comes to a husband i don't feel that same connection is there and quite rightfully so but i don't feel like you know that that level of love and stuff is there for that for that man so you think that a woman will always love the children unconditionally but not always the man no is that to do with the man um not fulfilling his roles. The men can do whatever they like, bro, in this case. Do you get me? Oh, so you it's think just... regardless of what happens... Oh, she, she'll love him and stuff. She'll care for him and stuff like that. But we're talking levels here, isn't it? Like, if we're talking pure about levels here, I feel like a man's love is greater. See, this is the thing, right? I'm not saying you're entirely wrong, but I would have a large problem getting on board with that because if you think about it, if you think about most um, actual marriages, who is it that ends up walking away? It's the father. No, it's... I don't know. One sec, one sec, one sec. Let's go to the stats here. Go on, right? give me stats then. The stats show that, what do you call, overwhelming majority... And I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get it up exactly in, in figures uh, and numbers for you, but overwhelming majority of breakups <clears throat> and divorces are initiated by women. But they didn't... Do, initiated is one thing, to physically take the steps and leave. Yeah, but like, what you call initiation? Because, because even... you can have an argument with your girlfriend and every other day say, I'm breaking up with you, I'm leaving you. Like, but to actually do it... See, I feel like men may say it more, but women actually go leave more often. Get the stats. I will get the stats for you, I will get yeah. the stats for you. But what you call, it, 100% is, it, um, this is the case where in divorces and even like even boyfriend-girlfriend relationship breakdowns, the breakup is always, always, always most likely initiated by a woman you know one other thing that we uh, often gloss over is cheating yeah. we don't gloss over it but what we gloss over is the fact that how women, how many women actually cheat mm. because often it's always considered a very male thing but come on guys common sense the male is cheating with a female like do you see what i'm trying to say here all right numerous studies have shown in fact nearly 70 percent of divorces initiated by women this is according to the uh, 2015 stats in America. Okay. So what do you call the American Sociological Association? And among college educated women, this number jumps to 90%, meaning almost all divorces are initiated by women, almost. Men may say, oh, initiated, I'm Initiated, uh, like, as in paperwork, solicitors, lawyers. No, initiated meaning, let's end this. But again, I, I, I just think there's a difference between saying yeah, and actually Women are it. more likely to feel held back by a marriage found uh, michael rosenfield from stanford university and more likely to have psychological distress from marriage and more likely to leave marriage than a man this is this is what i mean about pop culture and stuff this is what i mean by even like what you call we can't give a few examples and say this as well because overwhelming majority right of relationships that end 
and obviously we might have different experiences but i've definitely seen more women initiate like divorces than men which is really mad because in tv and stuff like i've seen men initiate it and leave and stuff like that more which is wild but that's in basically 10% of the time it's the man who's like i'm i'm giving you a divorce why do you think that is because i would assume that it would be easier for the man to move on it probably is but that's what i mean the, the woman men... might have more options per se yeah and also um psychological studies have also shown that women feel uh what do you call stronger emotion in the start of a breakup but heal completely when i say completely heal completely from it men initially have it a bit easier but they will even remember till the end of their days that this was a girl like you once in a while they'll like remember that person or that relationship it's more like stuff. it's more like if a boy and a girl break up at the beginning the boy just feels free yeah to do whatever he wants again because obviously as anybody knows when you're in a relationship there's a lot of things you can't do there's yeah. a lot of but uh, over yeah. time whereas the boy starts to fall in love again and never really forget the girl starts to forget permanently mm. and maybe move on i think in today's society because it's so much easier for girls to get options i can see why in the long run they would be less inclined to go back what about the power dynamic that's really interesting where do you think or how do you think the the control and power lies within a relationship See, this is weird because I have no stats on this and stuff, but like, how do you feel a, about it though? This is such a psychological thing. This is such a like a like a subtle thing, but like, obviously, in my family, I've seen most of the time that the power dynamics within the relationship are with the man. But weirdly enough, right, in most people, like in most households, most of my friends, it's always their mothers in control of their in household. control of what though? We'd like uh... in terms of everything, decision making. And also financial matters, even where in situations where the woman actually may choose not to work, and for the man to go, even in those cases, weirdly enough, the woman seems to. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not using it as derogatory term. I'm just as a gender thing. Um, their wives basically uh, are more in control of the decisions, or as as to say, wear the pants in the relationships. That's interesting. Whereas that is not the bringing that I've had. Why do you think that is, though? Huh? Why do you think that is? I don't know. It's like my father, for example. Like, I'm like shout out to my father, but like obviously he like takes into consideration my mom. Like he asks her what to do and like adv- advice and this and that about work, about things that is very personal to him and stuff like that. But then always makes the decision finally, and then she always accepts it as well. Do you get me? So he always like counsels her. Like he always listens to her and this and that, and like they talk back and forth and the. I, I don't know naturally and, and she actually likes him to do that like just to make the decision just tell yes, her that's what I was going to say I don't I know would, why I would assume from my experience that women yeah. like it when a man is a bit more assertive not in a physical so, yeah, way but I've in just, a I've just, showing initiative yeah so I've seen that and that's what I'm like that's normal to me and my family like I've seen my granddad like that and my uncles like that and stuff like that but the thing is weirdly enough I don't know I feel like in the modern generation there's been a, a, a switch in power dynamics so to say I think jobs matter. I think the fact that girls are more educated than boys these days, I think that doesn't help the guy's case in that sense. Like, if if the woman has a higher degree or a higher paid job, then you can clearly see why she is now taking back the control. Um, because a lot of these things matter. How much money comes into the household, it matters. Mm. You know, um, the whether or not you want to admit it, what the woman and man bring to the table in terms of whether it's a degree or job experience or whatever it is, that matters as well. You almost like make a comparison. Yeah. And it used to be back in the day, generally speaking, you bring it to the table and it was the men that hold most of the cards. Whereas now it's changing. Yeah. And like Jordan B. Peterson and stuff like that, people like that. What I remember him saying once was that men have to make their value in life. Like, for example, a man just being a man doesn't elicit any value um in society right very he true. has to what you call work for it he has to build himself he has to like what you call prove educate himself. himself prove himself um, all those kind of things whereas as sad as it is like what you call women and the same age group will be seen as a higher value by society as like like you said in the dating app for example there's like the, the, that that you know 20 <laughs> something percent of women is being coveted by that 78 percent of women right see this is this is um so, that shows you why yeah so basically women will have a, 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 a just being women right 
in in the current people like their doorstep for no reason. Yeah, and no, except their gender. What do you call? Obviously, like what do you call? Um, we should show chivalry to women and stuff like that. But the thing Obvious. is, um. I'm just saying that it's a fact that a man will just not be given that level of respect. No, I, I mean? think... Like, I will not just open a door for a guy my age, like, right. normally. Like, do you get the me? cliche is, let's be very real about this, the cliche is that, oh, if you're in love, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're in love and he, he or she treats you well, that's it. But the fact of the matter is, once you approach for marriage, what you have definitely matters. So that's why young men are very, in many ways, undesirable because they're probably just starting off their careers. They're probably not that financially stable, yeah. probably don't have the best car. And I'm not going to lie, the fact of the matter is that matters to the woman. So we can talk about love all day, but when you get realistic and you say, you're approaching for marriage, you're going to be demanded of, especially in certain cultures, of many things that you at a young, in your mid-20s, might not be able to provide for. Yeah. In some cases, very drastic cases, but mm. even in your early 30s, sometimes men haven't landed on their feet properly. Whereas a woman, whether or not people want to hear this, in many ways is still very attractive to a potential husband with or without any of those credentials. So just to summarize this, if I like, talking about relationships and how much has changed, and we can come back to this again, we definitely will, guys. But just give me a final feeling. The final feeling is... Like, a lot of the things we've talked about today are not, like, things that you want to hear. But the thing is that these are, like, hard observations. and It's been very difficult for me to even say some of these things without, like, sounding, like, sounding rude or, like, a misogynist or something like that. Because I'm not. But I'm just saying, like, I actually want to know why these things are and, you know, what you call. Because the thing is, whatever is happening in our dating environment isn't perfect. Absolutely. Course, it's far from perfect. And this whole, you know, disturbance, this whole, you know, like, like, like Lazarus said about the stats of like the people, sorts of people who, uh, you know, dating app ratios. Exactly, uh, is skewed. And Very skewed. Skewed means that there's something that's going wrong within the distribution. Yeah, definitely. I think the pressures for men and women are very different, but also starting to interchange in a way. And overall, um, I think look, people out there are just trying their best. It's difficult to always know what to do. It's one thing to hear that this is what you do in a relationship or oh, five ways to make a successful relationship it's different to live it but honestly go out there yeah. try your best i wish you all the best and until next time until next time <laughs>